Did you believe before you were saved? So many people would be saved, but they want to feel saved first. There was never a man who felt saved before he believed. God's plan is always this, if you will believe, you shall see the glory of God. I believe God wants to bring us all to a definite place of unswerving faith and confidence in himself. Jesus here uses the figure of a mountain. Why does he say a mountain? Because if faith can remove a mountain, it can remove anything. The plan of God is so marvelous that if you will only believe, all things are possible. There is one special phrase to which I want to call your attention and shall not doubt in his heart. The heart is the mainspring. See that young man and young woman. They have fallen in love at first sight. In a short, while there is a deep affection and a strong heart love, the one toward the other. What is a heart of love? A heart of faith. Faith and love are kin. In the measure that that young man and that young woman love one another, they are true. One may go to the north and the other to the south, but because of their love, they will be true to each other. It is the same when there is a deep love in the heart toward the Lord Jesus Christ. In this new life into which God has brought us, Paul tells us that we have become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that we should be married to another, even to him who was raised from the dead. God brings us into a place of perfect love and perfect faith. A man who is born of God is brought into an inward affection, a loyalty to the Lord Jesus that shrinks from anything impure. You see the purity of a man and woman when there is a deep natural affection between them. They disdain the very thought of either of them being untrue. I say that, in the measure that a man has faith in Jesus, he is pure. He who believes that Jesus is the Christ overcomes the world. It is a faith that works by love. Just as we have heart fellowship with our Lord, our faith cannot be daunted. We cannot doubt in our hearts. There comes, as we go on with God, a wonderful association, an impartation of his very life and nature within. As we read his word, and believe the promises that he has so graciously given to us, we are made partakers of his very essence and life. The Lord is made to us a bridegroom, and we are his bride. His words to us are spirit and life, transforming us and changing us, expelling that which is natural and bringing in that which is divine. It is impossible to comprehend the love of God as we think on natural lines. We must have the revelation from the Spirit of God. God giveth liberally, he that asketh receiveth. God is willing to bestow on us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Oh, it was the love of God that brought Jesus, and it is this same love that helps you and me to believe. In every weakness, God will be your strength. You who need his touch, remember that he loves you. Look wretched, helpless, sick one, away to the God of all grace, whose very essence is love, who delights to give liberally all the inheritance of life and strength and power that you are in need of. When I was in Switzerland, the Lord was graciously working and healing many of the people. I was staying with Brother Rius of Goldiewill, and two policemen were sent to arrest me. The charge was that I was healing the people without a license. Mr. Ruiz said to them, I am sorry that he is not here just now. He is holding a meeting about two miles away, but before you arrest him, let me show you something. Brother Ruiz took these two policemen down to one of the lower parts of that district, to a house with which they were familiar, for they had often gone to that place to arrest a certain woman, who was repeatedly put in the prison because of continually being engaged in drunken brawls. He took them to this woman and said to them, This is one of the many cases of blessing that have come through the ministry of the man you have come to arrest. This woman came to our meeting in a drunken condition. Her body was broken, for she was ruptured in two places. While she was drunk, the evangelist laid his hands on her and asked God to heal her and deliver her. 
The woman joined in, yes, and God saved me, and I have not tasted a drop of liquor since. The policeman had a warrant for my arrest, but they said with disgust, let the doctors do this kind of thing. They turned and went away, and that was the last we heard of them. We have a Jesus that heals the brokenhearted, who lets the captives go free, who saves the very worst. Dare you, dare you, spurn this glorious gospel of God for spirit, soul, and body. Dare you spurn this grace? I realize that this full gospel has in great measure been hid, this gospel that brings liberty, this gospel that brings souls out of bondage, this gospel that brings perfect health to the body, this gospel of entire salvation. Listen again to this word of him who left the glory to bring us this great salvation. Verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Whatsoever. Will you step out of the boat? Miracles were central to the ministry of Jesus and the beginnings of the early church. Yet, for many Christians today, the outrageous provision and promises of God feel like a thing of the past. Ever-increasing faith is a collection of Smith Wigglesworth's sermons that demonstrate all that is possible through belief with descriptive and inspiring first-hand accounts of healings, deliverances, and breathtaking miracles. Wigglesworth's ministry and life were rooted in the unwavering belief that God heals the sick, sets the captives free, and redeems the brokenhearted during Jesus' time and now. A plumber termed evangelical preacher, Smith Wigglesworth, 1859 to 1957, had a radical encounter with the healing power of God. One of the pioneers of the Pentecostal revival, Wigglesworth traveled the world preaching the gospel and healing the sick. Through his ministry, thousands were saved, hundreds were healed, and 14 people were raised from the dead. Known as the Apostle of Faith, Wigglesworth's formula was simple. First, read the Word of God. Second, consume the Word of God until it consumes you. Third, believe the Word of God. Fourth, act on the Word. In this compilation of sermon transcriptions, the reader will find first-hand accounts of miracles and healings, reflections on God's goodness and power, a faith-filled voice that passionately loved God, a challenge to live a life led by the Spirit, Assurance that a life of ever-increasing faith is possible for all, ever-increasing faith invites the reader on an incredible adventure to trust in God's power to heal and to live a life guided by the passion, creativity and love of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for watching Sea Harp.